Uh, this video is aimed at Piro314. Hi there, Piro. I'm not sure if it's a response exactly, but it's it's generated by some of the videos you've been doing lately on plant cognition, whether animals are alive, and more specifically the one that you addressed to myself and to be serious, where you're talking about awareness, that kind of thing. You also did that very long one, but I only watched the first bit of it. It seemed you were talking mostly to Gary, so uh, I dropped off that one. I might come back to it if I got the opportunity. Uh, what I want to do is just like um, go back a little bit, because it feels like we're walking in really stodgy territory right now. You know, we're arguing about whether the word consciousness is better than awareness, where you know people are joining in the conversation in the comments box who are making what I think are completely spurious claims about what conscious and awareness might be, and I would, which I would hope you would share. You know, we're just in a terrain here which is, is not going to be very satisfying for a long time. So I want to just cut right back to the to the to where we started from, which is really to do with uh, discussions about eating meat and not eating meat, because that's where it came in. You may remember uh, it was about that and the ethical, moral, value judgmental reasons why you might want to make one of those choices. But what I want to do here is I just want to uh, kind of reinforce. Not, not, uh, not a particular position, but reinforce the sense that we're coming into this, you and I, quite differently. Even though there's some shared ground in what we're saying, we are coming into it from different positions, with different sets of practices. We live our lives differently, and those differences are producing biases in what we're thinking and saying to one another. And they're going to keep doing that, so I just want to uh, out those. All right. Now, I'm a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for my entire adult life, over 30 years. I am completely, um, it's completely normalized in me. I don't think about eating meat. It doesn't occur to me if it turned out tomorrow that all animals were actually automata with nothing going on inside them and that God had put them here specifically for our purpose. I probably still wouldn't eat meat just because it would be too much of a faff to change my dietary plans. Um, so it's completely imbued in my system on an embodied level. Um, I just never walk down the meat aisles in supermarkets. Once or twice I have, accidentally, or because I need to get somewhere else. And I get a sense of weirdness. I get a frisson of weirdness just doing that. Because it's abnormal for me. You know, it, it's... My normality is a, a normality without meat in it. Yours is different. You're a, a meat eater. Uh, I don't think you... I don't I imagine you don't think that vegetarians are, are abnormal or weird. But I would, I would imagine that you would have that same frisson that a lot of other meat eaters have, which is, you know, if you're handed a plate which has got no meat on it, it just feels slightly wrong. Uh, if, that, if, that's, if that's not you, then, you know, there'll be something like that. Um, that it, that's pretty common amongst meat eaters. They just think there's something wrong if there's not a big slice of dead stuff on their plate. Uh, and, and so we're coming from those normalised positions and we both have psychological investments in asserting the normality of that, avoiding any kind of cognitive dissonance for that, making sure we feel good about ourselves, you know the psychology that underpins that. Uh, so that's going to have certain effects on the arguments that we favour, I think, which I'm trying to be hyper aware of, and uh, both in myself and in you. Uh, speak, my, my I said I'm a vegetarian, my behaviour patterns are that I, I don't eat meat, obviously, I do eat plants. Uh, and legumes and vegetables and all that kind of stuff, you know, and nuts, grains. I do eat all those things, of course. Uh, so I have a vested interest in maintaining a, a, a distinction between that and that. Yeah, I have a vested interest in, in maintaining that difference because part of my behaviour, you know, the last 30, 30 years of my life have been partly framed about the fact that around the the sense of a distinction, yeah? So obviously I'm going to have a, a tendency to be biased towards arguments which reinforce that distinction, which make it okay for me to eat this, but not okay for me to eat that or its cousins. That's going to make me, for example, and given the, the kinds of arguments that I make about vegetarianism, and I have to say I started out for very trivial reasons being vegetarian, the argu arguments have, have accumulated around the practice rather than driving the practice in the first place. The, uh, but the kind of arguments I make are always arguments to do with ethics, to do with um, avoiding uh, giving suffering to another living being, those kind of things. So that naturally leads me to favour arguments which would say that that thing is capable of suffering and that thing is not. 
that thing has something which might approximate some version of consciousness or awareness or sentience or capacity to make positive and negative value judgments or however you frame it, that does not. Yeah, I mean that's, so obviously I'm going to look for those distinctions and quite frankly I think I've found them. I don't think there's it personally but of course you can take this in any way you wish. I don't think there is any argument to be made there that's, an, that's substantial. You know, the, the idea that plants suffer is a joke, <laughs> I think. Uh, and as I said before, you know, consciousness studies does not form part of botany. Uh, there is no equivalent in mainstream botany uh, to any of those kind of discussions, and, and it's for good reason. Okay, you, you on the other hand will have a tendency to do something different. And you've done both of these, but what, there's two strategies, and you've used both of them at different times. To, to augment and support your behaviours and practices. Uh, right now you're just doing one. And one tendency which many, uh, many non-vegetarians, many meat eaters have, including yourself, is to uh, assert the distinction between this kind of animal and that kind of animal, or the kind of animal that grazes in these kind of fields, or the kind of animal that produces lamb, or that produces bacon, or produces chicken, you know, those kind of things, to assert the distinction. That's not something you've done recently, but I think in the past you have made kind of suggestions that there are very salient distinctions across um, dividing lines between humans and other animals um, alongside which distinctions in treatment can be justified. It's okay to treat these animals in certain ways somebody might say because they don't have an inner life, because they don't feel pain, because they don't uh, have language because they don't have a self model because they don't uh, have a yeah you could you, you know those kind of things and those arguments are all about setting distinctions between this kind of meat and that kind of meat and making one verboten and the other one okie dokie uh, as I say you haven't done that recently the other distinction is to collapse the distinction between I beg your pardon the other difference that um, people like yourself, meat eaters, tend to, the strategy that they tend to adopt is to collapse the difference between that and that, between that and that. It doesn't really change the basic idea that, uh, that I'm, I'm assuming that all of us would like to reduce suffering if at all possible, uh, but collapsing the difference between plants and animals, uh, or refusing to acknowledge the difference, or saying that oh, it's all conscious in some kind of way, or this awareness permeates all of this stuff, or uh, or these things can suffer as well. You know, all those kinds of distinctions, they don't get rid of the ethical problem. They just share it. They just share the misery. You know what I mean? So that meat eaters like yourself can say, yeah, well, I eat meat. And meat is conscious and can feel pain. And I'm not going to say so, but that's probably a bad thing. But, you know, you can't talk to me about that because you eat plants and beans and legumes and grains and they've kind of got consciousness, awareness possibly can kind of feel pain too, can't they? So we're on the same boat. Um, I mean, that, that, you're not the first to make that argument, of course. It's been going on for a long time. But it's bogus. It is bogus, I think. So my bias is to find distinctions in one place in the spectrum which is between things that suffer and those that can't. And I'm drawing on a tradition here from Jeremy Bentham onwards. Well, back before Jeremy Bentham, of course, but on, before, on since, to do with the key dividing line being the ability to suffer, the ability to see value distinctions in the world, to make not just recognitions of difference, not just this is that temperature, this is that temperature, but this thing burns and this thing doesn't. Those kinds of value distinctions, what I'm saying is that, um, well, you know what I'm saying since I said it before, that those are the differences that make a difference, and those are the differences that uh, someone who is truly concerned about suffering and reducing suffering in the world would hinge their uh, distinction-making processes on. And that's, and that's the one that I choose, if it's all possible. Uh, I think the distinction that you're trying to... Well, you're not really making a distinction. You're saying there is no distinction. You're just kind of blurred, just kind of looking the water, trying to blur the whole thing. Um, quite frankly, just, I think, so that you don't look like a shit. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the way That's the way it seems, Piro, you know, I mean, it really does. Um, I kind of... I, 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 and most of the people I know are meat eaters. I don't, I don't know that many vegetarians. Most people I know eat meat, and they're perfectly nice people, you know, I have no real issue with that. 
Uh, and some of them are honest and some of them aren't. Some of them say, I eat meat, I know there is an argument against it, uh, but I do it anyway because I like it. And then some of them engage in the kind of obfuscatory, self-justifying practices, which I have to say I think you're engaged in there, which is just about muddying the waters. You know, let me give one example of what I mean by that, Pero. It just sounds like I'm insulting you. It's this awareness thing. You started talking about awareness, I think it was just yesterday. Is that a better term than consciousness? Sure, yeah, we can use that if you like. And, uh, and I made some suggestions about non-animal forms, non-sentient creatures which you could call aware, you know, things like motion detectors or uh, light meters or whatever. Thermostat. And you might have a problem with that. You might say that we need something more complex to store information or react or whatever. Fine, I don't know. Set, set the gauge anywhere you like. But as soon as you start saying that there is awareness without, sens- without sensory organs, or there is awareness without the ability to feel things, including feeling pain, then it becomes incoherent and nonsensical. I mean, I would invite you to just try that for yourself. You know, close your eyes and see how much, how much of the visual world you're aware of. You know, put your fingers in your ears and see what kind of auditory experiences you're aware of. If it was possible, silence the inside of your body and see what kinds of feeling you're aware of. Have your arm anaesthetized and see what your arm feels like from the inside. It, it disappears. Awareness is always awareness of, and the of is mediated through sensory organs, and those sensory organs plough through the basal ganglia. We know the roots, you know, it goes through the Noki receptors to, to give pain re- responses. We, we know the roots. And... Um, you know, unless you're telling me that when you do that, when you close your eyes and you do all the other... When all of the bodily awareness stuff is taken away, all the bodily awareness stuff that amoebas, for example, which you've cited, and plants you've cited, don't have, you know, take away all that stuff from yourself. Are you, are you saying that there is still an awareness going on in you? You're still aware of something somehow, still somehow aware, even though all of the capacities for awareness have been, of human awareness have been taken away from you. I mean, if you're saying that, then you're using then you're using a term from awareness which has no sense, which makes no sense to me. I'm sorry, it just makes no sense. Then you're saying a corpse is aware. Then you know, I mean, these dead trees are aware. Anyhow, that's uh, that's that. I just wanted to return back to the the starting point for this because it is it is what's motivating and driving this conversation forward. Um, and it's easily lost in a kind of fudge of airy fairy talk about awareness and consciousness and that's not what it's about it's about whether it's okay to kill things like that and eat them or not i think it's not personally i just think it's not if you do then tell me why